What is up YouTube? It is Matt back with another crypto video. Today's video will be a little bit different than normal rather than talk about a specific currency. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, why it may, or my personal opinion, why it may take a bad situation or a bad economy before we really see a mass adoption of cryptocurrency in general. Like as you can see here, Iran plans national cryptocurrency to evade U.S. sanctions and really that's the U.S. sanctions are crippling the Iranian economy and it's really uh, falling flat on its face and they're switching to a cryptocurrency to kind of stem the tides there. As we also see in Venezuela, uh, Dash adoption and inflation prone Venezuela provides validity for cryptocurrency and certainly the uh, Venezuelan economy is uh, collapsing before our eyes. I think they're at 1 million percent inflation rates of their uh, fiat currency and that's why they're moving to switch to uh, cryptocurrency. I know Dash is, has been one of the most popular ones there in the most recent days, but certainly they've adopted Digibyte and various other cryptocurrencies in uh, the wake of their economic collapse, which kind of uh, leads me to believe that it's going to take a situation similar to this uh, here in the United States or really any country in the world before mass adoption is truly uh, visualized. And that's, I guess you could say the old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, our current system is still working, even though it's not the best it could be, it, it is still working. And these, uh, I guess, older generation people are not going to uh, jump on board to the cryptocurrency. They're not going to want to change the currency that they've been using their entire lives if it's still working. You know, there's really uh, no reason to make that jump. But really, as uh, my friend over here at Cryptocurrency YouTuber, Phase Crypto, always uh, likes to bring up in most of his videos is the world debt clock. You can see uh, the United States is over $21 trillion in debt. With the, we're supposed to have the greatest economy in the world. China is supposed to have the second greatest economy in the world. They're $2 trillion in debt. And really, every first world, every major country in the world is in massive amounts of debt. And really, what a, what's the magic number we need to hit before um, it hits the fan, so to speak? I mean, just look, the public debt to GDP ratio in the United States is almost 70%. The external debt to GDP ratio is 96%. I mean, does that have to hit 100% before we start seeing uh, major negative impacts? And really, uh, I don't think, or I'm not here to predict like when something bad might happen, but certainly one would assume it's going to happen within our lifetime. Uh, I mean, we can't, the, the rates these are going up, we can't just be hitting $100 trillion in debt, $200 trillion in debt, and just keep going like nothing is going wrong. And everything is fine certainly there has to come a point where uh, people be like wait a minute uh, this isn't working and certainly uh, why I think it could be sooner rather than later you could say is uh, really the climate change topic now I don't know uh, how you feel one way or the other on climate change but it's certainly uh, real uh, whether the uh, mainstream narrative on it is real or not I I'm kind of skeptical but certainly uh, we are seeing changes in climate, whether it be extreme drought and heat or extreme cold and wet or uh, everything in between. There, it's, it's taken its toll on our agriculture across the entire planet. And really, we're seeing uh, just now starting to see these food price increases. And really, that could lead to uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. Uh, this article out of ABC, uh, when will food prices stop rising? No time soon, experts say out of Poland. Poland expects drought to have a minor impact on food prices. Out of the UK, UK food prices to rise 5% due to extreme weather. Um, this one out of the business green, are climate related food price hikes already starting to bite? And the answer to that is absolutely. I mean, every country in the world, we're seeing uh, higher prices for food. They're not massive amounts, at least not here in the US. But again, the US is one of the largest producers of produce and uh, other sources of food so really we wouldn't see effects here right away because we're gonna just export less and keep more here at home to keep the prices at bay uh, I think this YouTube channel here adapt 2030 does a fantastic job uh, he comes out with videos every day sometimes multiple times a day uh, showing uh, extreme weather events across the world and how it's affecting agriculture in that specific area and I think uh, if you haven't uh, subscribe to this guy already I would definitely check his videos out because it, it, it really 
uh, brings to light the magnitude of the situation and how it could affect our future for sure. Because I know we've seen, um, when we saw in the mid-2000s, the price of oil and gasoline uh, going through the roof, um, there were ways to get around that. You know, uh, you could switch to public transportation, uh, you could carpool with people, uh, you could simply stay home and not uh, go out, you could uh, not go on vacations. Um, there were definitely options you had to uh, reduce the amount of fuel and reduce the amount of money you were spending on fuel. But when it comes to food and what we eat, there's really not an option on how to uh, spend less. You know, when it comes, if these prices continue to rise and kind of get out of hand a little bit, if it comes down to putting food on the dinner table or buying a uh, new pair of Jordans, the, the decision is going to be uh, pretty easy to make, you know. And as, as people spend more and more money on food items, and they'll spend less money on luxury items or uh, kind of things that aren't a necessity, uh, that's when we'll see a major impact in our economy. And that's when uh, these numbers will start to uh, reflect truly how bad the situation is. Um, I certainly, recent news about the stock market being at all-time highs is fantastic news. But uh, it's certainly... <laughs> the calm before the storm, I guess you could say, uh, as Trump would say. Um, but really, that is why I think, as we're seeing in Iran and Venezuela, that's why I think uh, it really takes a bad situation before we will see mass adoption of cryptocurrency. And certainly that's uh, bad news, I guess, for the general population of the world. But uh, good news if you're holding cryptocurrency currently or uh, getting involved in it. Uh, I'm not, not, this video is not intended to like uh, instill, instill fear into anyone, but it, these are topics that are going to be uh, challenges in the future, and these are topics that we need to start talking about so that we can uh, find alternative ways, ways to uh, produce food, uh, find alternative ways to uh, use currency, because uh, we need to be putting our resources into food production and not our resources into the uh, production of fiat currency. I know it, uh, it takes a lot of uh, resources to uh, mine the cotton or whatever we need to make paper for currency. It takes a lot of resources to mine the metals we need to make coins. Uh, and certainly those resources could be put into the production of food, uh, which would uh, have a greater benefit to society if we have the option to switch to a digital currency. Uh, so that will wrap up this video. Again, uh, if you enjoy it, please subscribe like it, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you later.